Hey, Walter Sorrell's back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, converting a pressure pot for curing resins and other knife handle materials. Hey guys, quick video today. A lot of folks in the knife making world have started getting into resin casting, wood stabilizing, and other things that involve resins and epoxies. Now, one thing in common with all this stuff is that many of the techniques involve changes in air pressure, either pulling a vacuum or pressurizing some sort of vessel. Vacuum is typically used for wood stabilizing and pressure for various types of casting. Now, I recently did a video about a vacuum setup, link in the cards and description, uh, but today we're going the other way. What I'll be doing today is turning this paint sprayer vessel from good old Harbor Freight into a pressure chamber for casting. Now look, there are a bunch of videos from woodworkers and cosplay types and all these guys who show more or less the same thing, so really nothing new on that front if you watch one of those videos before. But as we run through this, I'll try to show clearly not just what you need to do, but also why a knife maker might be interested in this kind of gear. If you do want to do this, by the way, you need a compressor or some sort of supply of high pressure air. First this is what we're dealing with el cheapo chinese pressure pot from harbor freight intended use fill it with paint attach a compressed air line and a paint sprayer start spraying here's the application for us so i made a video many many years ago of showing you know a way to make your own customized micarta micarta is a you know industrial material but the cool thing is you can actually make this stuff yourself make it in a kind of customized way so that you're producing a material that nobody else on the planet uh, has ever made now i started getting comments later from people saying that i should do it in a pressure pot well the video was done it was a long time ago i didn't think much about it but fast forward to the blade show this year and I was hanging out at the Combat Abrasives booth with Andreas Kalani. He showed me some extremely cool cast handles he'd made. He had flowers and bugs and stuff in them, really wild. Anyway, I kind of filed that away. Next thing you know, here I am looking to make some micarta. So let's get to the point. Damn near anything you make involving sticky stuff like epoxy or resins or whatever will get bubbles in them. Because of the viscosity of these materials, unlike, say, water or alcohol or something, those bubbles will just sit there and you end up with ugly haze or even large visible bubbles in whatever you cast. If you pressurize the material, though, those bubbles will get squashed down to a microscopic size and, for all intents and purposes, disappear, leaving you with a really clean, bubble-free material. Here's the pot. It's a very robust chunk of metal, theoretically rated for 60 pounds per square inch of pressure. Top secures with these hold downs. Take it off, inside it has a silicon gasket, which may well have been made by a four year old. And the top has a couple of fittings for air and paint to go in and out of, and a siphon for sucking out the paint. Also, a regulator, which as the name suggests, regulates the pressure of the air. We're just pushing in air. We don't have anything coming out. So we don't need the siphon. We don't need this second connection. Finally, you have a pop-off valve that's basically an emergency valve so that the pot won't blow up if you crank up the regulator too far. Here's what we'll use for the conversion. I use quick connects on the compressed air in my shop. Most people do. Depending on your setup, you might have it running in either of two directions. So I'll show you how to do it either way. If you want the female side on your air supply, then you'll need one of these, the male quick connect. If you go the other way, you'll need both a female connect and a short pipe nipple. If you're looking at the hardware store for these fittings, there are all kinds of different air fittings, plumbing fittings, and so forth. All the connections here are quarter inch pipe thread, also known as NPT, with one exception, this a 3 8 inch pipe thread cap or plug. You'll also need a quarter inch cap and one quarter, two quarter ball valve. That is it for supplies. I'll start by removing the siphon, which we can screw out and discard.
Next, I'll cap this fitting that's intended to be used for the air outflow line. I've seen guys on the interwebs who move the pop-off valve here, but I see no reason to do that. Pressure's pressure. Anything that's connected to this chamber is going to be measuring the same pressure, so there's no good reason to move the pop-off valve. If you haven't worked with pressurized air much before, it's always good practice to wrap the threads with Teflon tape prior to screwing the fittings together. Always remember to put it on toward the direction that you're threading. Otherwise, it tends to screw up as you attach everything. This is the regulator inflow. And these two are outflow. I'll cap the first outflow port here. And here on the inflow, I'll attach the ball valve. I've seen people who didn't use a valve here, they just relied on the regulator, but to me, this is really important. You really don't want to run air straight in here unimpeded. You could screw up and overpressurize the pot, and you really don't want this thing exploding on you because you turned the regulator the wrong way or the pop-off valve got jammed. Then, I'll add the male quick connect connector. Like I said, you could go the other way, adding a nipple here if you want the female connector on this side. But this is how it ends up for me. Male on the pressure pot side, female on the airline side. The pop-off valve is set to vent at about 30 PSI, but I plan to run at 50. Like I said, max pressure for this pot is 60 PSI, so I'll run it at about 50 just to be safe. The pop-off valve has a little slotted screw adjustment here. It takes some fiddling around if you don't have a tool specifically made to do it, but with a thin bladed screwdriver I didn't have much trouble. You just screw it in to increase the pop-off pressure and then you can back it out to decrease it. I've got it set now for about 55 pounds. It's enough to be safe, but not enough that it's gonna go off half the time when you pressurize it to 50 pounds. And that's it, you're good to go. To fire it up, you just place your mold or molds into the pressure pot, close the lid, tighten these handles, connect your air, and use the valve to pressurize the tank. Then the super cheap ass gasket leaks like crazy. I will say it generally seems to kind of settle in after a while, and once it does, it'll hold the pressure for a really long time. This will more or less hold pressure overnight. When I say more or less, I mean maybe it'll lose 5 PSI, but that's pretty good for overnight. If it continues to be an annoyance, I may try using silicon caulk to make a gasket myself, but it seems to be holding up okay right now. You just sort of have to jiggle it around in order to get it to work right. Just to show you a little test, here's some Alumilite casting resin that I ran through here. I intentionally mixed it so it was completely full of bubbles and now dead clear. All right, so if you hung in here this long, you're probably serious about making some knife handle materials. So next week, I'll show how I made these little stackable molds for producing micarta for knife handle scales. All right, thanks guys, and keep making those knives. Thanks for watching guys. If you like what we're doing here, please subscribe and make sure that you click on that bell so you get notified of all the latest videos. Want to buy a knife from me? Check out my modern blades at tacticsarmory.com. Digging the channel? You can support our video making efforts on Patreon. You know, I've been banging away on these videos for like 10 years. So I hope you'll show some love for all that hard work. Link in the cards and descriptions. Finally, if you're interested in making Japanese swords, check out my full line of Japanese sword videos where I show how to forge Japanese swords as well as how to polish them and how to make fittings, handles, and scabbards. Walter Sorrel's Blades dot com.